Hello everyone, this is Alex, also known as Solonus Dracone, and welcome back to my Recording Basics series. Yesterday, we discussed how to grab a source in OBS and begin adjusting for volume. Today, I'm going to show how to add multiple sources and arrange them on the screen. Why would we want to add multiple sources? A lot of reasons, really. For one, some folks might want to put themselves on the vid on webcam. For another, you might have a game that doesn't conform to 16.9, and you might want to put banners on the sides. For a third, you might even plan to stream a lot, and want to add things like your channel's banner and such. Now, this isn't all necessary strictly speaking, but it's the little extra touches that stand out and make your work shine. I'm not going to discuss webcams at all on this series, except to say that adding one as a source is done by selecting Video Capture Device under Sources. I don't like my face on the games I'm playing. So let's start off by taking a 4-3 ratio game and adding banners to it. My selection is going to be Undertale, because I have some lovely nifty banners left over from my playthrough with my good buddy Rambler, who designed them for me, and I'm going to use it as a demonstration. I'm going to suggest that you make a new scene for this. We're going to name it Undertale. For every game you're going to need to add multiple sources to, it's best to have it as a separate scene. Having tested all this out beforehand, I find that adding Undertale as a game capture instead of window capture works better. For this, I will want Capture Cursor off, and again, none of the other options. Same as before, we fit the screen. A quick way of doing that is pressing Ctrl F while highlighting the source in question. Now, before we go adding banners, it's a good idea to get somewhere in the game that will have a lot of stuff on the screen, all the way to the borders of the game window. That gives us the best idea of where we'll want to set our banners. Trust me when I say that it is far better to add in your banners at this stage of production rather than to add them in during the editing process. It's a lot less work and a lot less quality loss, as well as time, on the export. Now, making the banners, I have very little experience doing myself. It's a very tricky business involving math, but as just a guideline, start by making sure the image is the same height as your recorded video resolution. If your resolution is 720p, then your image should be that height and the same for 1080. Now, the closest 4-3 ratio match to 720p is 960 by 720. Doing the math, since 1280 is the width on 720p, we subtract 960 from 1280. That leaves us with 320 extra pixels. Since the pixels are equally distributed on either side of the screen, we'd end up with the ideal dimensions for banners being 160 by 720. Scale that up to 1080p, and we get 240 by 1080. Does it all make sense? I hope so. Now the good news is that you can easily downscale on OBS. So if you just want to make all the, your banners to 240 by 1080 dimensions, that'll work just fine. We can scale it down, no trouble. The thing is, not all games will necessarily conform to the same dimensions. So for other games like emulators, you might have to play around with the banner dimensions. One good way to get a proper idea of the size you're working with is to record a bit of the game and then run the video. Full screen it, pause it, and using the Windows Snipping tool, take a screen cap of it while it is full screen. You can then use the picture editing program of your choice to measure the pixels. So to add a batter image, just add a new source and choose image. Name this one something like Write Banner, or UT Write, or whatever it is that you prefer. Browse to the location of the already pre-measured banner, hit OK, and now it's on the screen. You'll notice it has a red border around it. This means that this is selected, and you can move it around the screen until it is where you want it to be. Since it's pre-measured already and it works just fine, it snaps into place right over there, and does not take over any of the game window. Do the exact same thing for the left image. Now then, it looks like we have a nice, lovely, well-fitting set of banners embedded in our video and ready to go. Just remember one very important detail. On your sources list, sources that are higher up are more in the foreground. In some cases, having your game's source on top of the list will block out your banners. We're safe because Undertale just plays in a proper 4.3 window, but it's good practice to have your game sources be on the bottom of the list and the banners up above it. 
You can move them around by highlighting them and clicking on the little up and down arrow keys, or just by dragging and dropping up and down. Another method is holding the control button and using the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard. If your banners aren't showing, try moving your game source down below them on the sources list. So then, with this set up, you're ready to begin your recording, once you've worked out your audio balance and default devices and such, as we've discussed already. The banners will be a part of the recorded video, and most importantly, they'll be a native part of the video itself, which is going to reduce your workload considerably upon editing. The other thing I'm going to show you is a teensy bit more challenging, but if you can master it, it's worth doing. I'm going to set up for a Nintendo DS emulator. As you know, Nintendo DS games have two screens. While it's okay, I suppose, just to capture one screen, I do feel like we're missing out by not showing both. Practicing these skills will make it easier for you to figure out how to toss in things like webcams and channel logos on your own endeavors, so we'll just do this as a demonstration. As before, we'll start with creating a new scene and naming it for the game we're playing. In this case, I'll be doing Chrono Trigger, as it's one I've done before. Here, it's essential to get to a spot in-game where you can clearly see the delineation between the two screens. This works. Adding a region of a window has a few more steps. Add your game as a window capture or game capture, whichever works best. Name it to reflect whichever region of the screen you want it to be. And of course, select the correct window. In this case, I'm not going to capture a cursor. Of course, always fit to screen before you start doing any extra little things. Once that's added, you'll have to add a filter in order to select the region of the screen that you want. Right-click on the game source and go to Filters. We're going to add a filter and choose the Crop slash Pad option and just name it something like Left Align. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Now then, here's the annoying bit you're going to have to raise and lower the values as needed. OBS promises to have an easier way to do this in a future update, but for the moment, this is how we gotta do it. If we want to adjust for our left screen, we need to start adjusting right. Now, you can do this by rapid clicking, or by holding down the mouse button and just waiting patiently, or by putting in a numerical value that you know works. In this case, 750 gets us pretty darn close. You also notice we unfortunately have the title bar on there. Adjust your top value upward to get that off of the screen. Once that's done, then keep adjusting the right value upward until you see no more traces of the second screen on there. Once you've got it where you want it to be, hit close, and now we have only the left screen showing on our first source. What I'm going to do is I'm going to squish it all the way to the left. We're going to do the exact same thing for the DS emulator's right screen. So just add your source, same as before, fit to screen, and then you're going to right click and go to the filters for that particular source. Add crop pad, same as before, we're going to say right align, and this time we're going to be adjusting the left value because we're trying to push the screen left. 750 just as before, and 30 seemed to work for the top the last time we did it. Keep on pressing the uh, up button until your left align gets you exactly where you want it to be. In this case, 770 seems to be nigh on perfect, and you hit close. Now, this obviously isn't going to cut it. We're not going to get both screens at the full proper resolution. So what you're going to want to do is adjust this particular source until it fits properly. Might be a good idea to maximize your OBS screen so that way you have the most screen real estate to look at, and just kind of squish down until it fits. Alright, now we've got some empty space to mess with. Feel free to fill it up with a single tall picture that fits, or a couple smaller pictures. I'm afraid I have no good guidelines here on picture dimensions, as I'm not certain how many pixels the second smaller screen is taking up, so I can't calculate easily how many pixels you need to fill. The main important thing here is you don't want any of your supplementary art overlapping either of the game windows. I'm just going to add a couple picks I've used in the past here as image sources. Move them around and squish and adjust as you need to until they all fit properly. Again, we don't want any of our art to overlap 
any of the actual game screen. So since Chrono Trigger Left is our main game screen, that is going all the way to the top of the list. Alright, looks like we got a pretty good setup with no overlap, maybe a little bit of black lining in, in between, but really doesn't look too bad, honestly. Now, you could just as easily add your webcam to this instead of artwork, so if you feel like doing that, go nuts. It helps once in a while when you're adjusting things to click off of the main screen area so you can get a better idea of where things are, and you can squish and raise and lower and all that accordingly until you have it the way you want it to be, without seeing that red line all around the place. Just as before, do all your audio adjustments, test record, yada yada, until you're satisfied, with what's coming out as the audio, and then you can begin your recording. And I think that's enough for OBS itself, ladies and gentlemen. You get the idea. Next episode, and probably the final one of the basics, is going to cover video editing. Please remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Once again, I am Alex, also known as Solomon Dracone, and this has been my Recording Basics. Thank you very much, and goodbye.